Okay everyone, today I'm going to be seeing if I can actually make food glow in the dark by using tonic water, which has the fluorescent ingredient quinine in it. So quinine fluoresces under UV light. So I have some tonic water in here. You can see how bright it gets when I shine my UV flashlight on it here. Look at that. <laughs> so my question is, what if I cook spaghetti in this or make jello out of this? Will it actually fluoresce under a UV light really bright like this? And if that does end up working, then I'm gonna try to see if I can actually soak my hand in it while my hand fluoresce under UV light. So what fluorescent means is that it absorbs UV light, which we can't see. So any light that you can see in this flashlight here is actually not UV light, but it's visible light. So the quinine in this tonic water absorbs UV light, but then emits visible blue light. So the light that we can see here is blue light. So when we say something is fluorescent, the reason like fluorescent colors or fluorescent markers look so bright is because they're taking the UV portion of whatever light is being shined on them and they're emitting it as visible light. So it actually looks a little bit brighter than it would just if it were regular and didn't have any fluorescent paint in it. Okay, so to make our glow in the dark spaghetti, first we'll just pour in our tonic water to our pan, get it boiling. and then pour in the spaghetti. So hopefully the spaghetti will absorb enough of the quinine to make it actually fluoresce under the UV light. Okay, so let's see if this actually worked. Let's check if the spaghetti actually fluoresces. Whoa, look at it. Look how bright it is. I didn't expect it to actually be this bright because it's darker colored, but it actually fluoresces quite well. This is cool. <laughs> Okay, and I also went ahead and made some jello with the tonic water. So basically I just substituted wherever it called for water, I used tonic water, and this is what it looks like. So it looks regular under regular light. It looks like this is actually peach and lime flavor, so they look pretty normal. They actually taste pretty good too. Okay, let's turn off the lights on the jello and see what it looks like. Three, two, one. Whoa, look how bright this is. This is so cool. So it looks like I'm ready to eat just this radioactive substance. This is so awesome. Okay, so here's what my meal looks like in regular light. Now let's see what it looks like under the black light. Whoa, look at that. You can see the tonic water glowing. Look at the spaghetti. Look how bright that is. And then the jello. <laughs> That's awesome. I can't believe how bright the spaghetti actually got. It's almost as bright as the tonic water itself. Okay, so the next obvious question from here is, if I can soak food in tonic water and it fluoresces under UV light, what if I soak myself in tonic water? Will I then fluoresce under UV light? Well, there's only one way to find out. So I'm gonna soak my hand in tonic water for a few hours and see if it can absorb enough quinine to actually fluoresce under UV light. Let's try it out. Okay, so get enough tonic water here. Here we go, let's start the clock. It's kind of weird, I've actually never stuck my hand in soda like this before. Look how much is bubbling on my hand. So my hand is providing a lot of nucleation sites for the carbonation to come out of solution. Okay, so not very surprisingly, this is actually quite irritating to my hand. It's mainly due to the carbonation though, I believe, because it's just bubbling off my hand, so kind of how it hurts your tongue when you take a good sip of soda, 
with a lot of carbonation. It feels like that on my hand. Okay, it's been about 45 minutes and it's actually hurting a lot more than I'd expect. Uh, still, I think it's due to the carbonation. All in the name of science. We'll see what happens after a few hours here. I wonder if it's irritating because the liquid gets down in the creases of your skin and then it starts to uh, come out of solution. The CO2 starts to come out of solution so it bubbles up and kind of pushes the tiny little creases of your skin apart. I'm not sure why exactly it hurts when things carbonate on you. So the other reason why this could be hurting my hand is probably because of the pH difference. So let's measure the pH. 2.7, <laughs> so it's actually pretty acidic. So that could be a very major reason why, why my hand is starting to hurt too, so. So you can see how I'm spending my coronavirus quarantine days by soaking my hand in tonic water. If you're looking for a better way to spend your quarantine days, consider ordering Extreme Garage Science. So these are a lot of the experiments that you've seen on my channel, but I explain them a little bit more in detail. You can do them with your kids, do them by yourself. It's pretty much for any age group. So if you're tired of trying to do homeschool for your kids, just toss them this book and tell them this is now school. So I'll put a link in the description where you can get Extreme Garage Science if you haven't yet. Okay, so it's definitely been long enough now that my hands are wrinkled. Let's go and see what this looks like under the black light. You can see my hands are wrinkled. Okay, so here's the tonic can. You can see the Fingernails are pretty bright. Let's look at the, my calluses are bright too. So I think the top one is a little brighter, but they both look pretty, you can see kind of this bluish hue to them. Okay. So it actually didn't have a huge effect on my hand. It was a little bit brighter and around the edges of my cuticles on my nails, you could see it was a little bit brighter, but about the same as my other hand, which I didn't soak in it. So that's probably because your hands don't really readily absorb water that much. So not only do you not absorb that much water, you probably don't absorb the quinine very well either because that's a molecule that's much bigger than water. So your skin is pretty protective. It has an outer layer of dead skin, which keeps things from getting inside of it as well. And so it's hard for things to cross that barrier. If you let stuff sit there long enough, eventually it will soak through your skin. There can be drug delivery delivered through your skin. When you put a patch on your skin, it can be delivered through your skin, but it takes a long time and it depends on the specific molecule as well. So, and I should mention, if you're gonna do this experiment, I should mention that some people do have allergic reactions to quinine. So basically, if you've ever drinking tonic water, you're probably fine, but if you haven't, and you're gonna try this, be sure that you're not allergic to quinine. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet, and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.